For this video, um, I'd like to talk about um, you know, how you can use your keyboard to uh, control non-Arteria plugins. Um, and um, this, this is actually new for um, you know, this uh, version of the script. Um, it actually is pretty powerful because um, you have at your disposal um, 16 times um, you know, nine uh, controls that, that can be, or, sorry, 16 times nine parameters that can be controlled by the encoders, 16 times nine parameters that can be controlled by the faders or sliders. And um, for the MK2, you have 16 times nine parameters that can be toggled on and off um, from these bank buttons. And let me explain how to do this. Um, so let's say, um, you know, we're going to use Omnisphere, um, which, you know, is one of my favorite plugins. Um, and so let's, let's add an Omnisphere plugin. And, um, you know, Omnisphere has a ton of controls. Um, so, you know, like they have, um, you know, let's say, let's just say, let's just focus on this shape symmetry. Um, you know, you might want to be able to quickly adjust like shape symmetry and hard sync between A, B, C, D, um, right? And maybe we want to be able to turn off the filter for A, filter for B, filter for C, and filter for D um, with these bank buttons, right? So, um, you know, when you're using a non-Arteria plugin, um, you know, just switch to plugin mode. So you want this light to turn off, uh, hold it down. Now we're controlling the channel plugin, okay? Um, and again, make sure you have, um, you know, if, if it's not working um, and you find something wrong, it's because you did not, and I, I didn't do this yet, you have to set the MIDI input port uh, to 10. So make sure you do this. Um, and, you know, again, a quick tip to do this fast is to actually save a preset. Um, and then once you have a preset set, so let's call this Arteria, um, Keylab Omnisphere. Um, once you have a preset set, then you can easily load it just by going to your presets and going down here. Um, and that'll restore the MIDI input port 10. Okay, so once we have that set, then um, the next thing we do is we can, you know, start learning. Okay, so let's learn this, uh, let's learn this um, slider here, MIDI CC Learn with, um, you know, the slider here that we're interested in, okay? And you'll see now we can adjust it. Um, and then same thing, we want this second one for the second one. So let's go ahead and do that, MIDI CC Learn. And I'm going to toggle that guy, okay? And this last one, and I'm gonna toggle this guy, okay? And you'll see that we've learned these three um, and then for, you know, this bank light, this is only available on MK2, but I want to learn this filter button for this one. Okay, so now if I toggle it, that turns the filter light on and off, and the status light will also correspond to that. Um, and then, um, so I did tell you that, um, you know, as long as you do not have um, Omni mode enabled or um, you don't do Omni learn, Omni means that um, you ignore the channel number that's sent from the, um, the, the MIDI control codes. Um, but as long as we don't have any of the Omni stuff enabled, um, then you can actually control, um, you know, 16 times, um, you know, uh, nine versions of these sliders. Um, so right now we're on uh, MIDI channel one, but we can change the MIDI channel with, you know, these uh, page button presses. So now we're on MIDI channel two, I haven't mapped anything. So these sliders, they don't do anything at all. These buttons, they don't do anything either. Um, these are completely different. Um, they look like different uh, MIDI codes and we can assign them to um, you know separate uh, parameters. So for B, let's page two, let's assign you know this the first three sliders to page two. Um, so I'm on channel two. So let's learn this one and this one I'll learn as well. And then this third one I'll learn here, okay? So if I'm on channel two, these three will adjust my B setting. So let's turn it all the way down and you'll see my A setting stays from what it was before. 
if I change to uh, channel one, then, you know, uh, whatever I tweak here only affects the learned A pages, but not the B. The B pages stays the same. So that's that's cool uh, about this. And, um, and so you have 16 pages of sliders, 16 pages of knobs, and 16 pages of um, bank buttons. Um, and all of these, even this last set, um, is assignable um, in plugin mode. Um, and so there's a lot of power um, that you can do. Um, previously, you know, in the previous iteration of the script, um, you know, you'd have to switch to user mode, and then you'd have to learn, and then when you want to control the DAW again, you have to switch back to DAW. Um, so I was getting tired of doing that, so I decided to integrate the, um, you know, the best parts of the user mode, you know, the programmable part. Um, into um, into the DAW button, so that's that's you know done now. Um, so it's extremely powerful. And the other thing, the other way you can tell that you are in, um, you know, you're controlling the plugin is if all these lights, you know, they set to red, uh, unless you've purposely did that for your um, channel rack, then you know you're controlling, you're you're controlling your plugins. Um, okay, so that's it for this video. Um, and uh, I do, I did figure out a way, and I'll have to cover this. I'm still exploring it, but there is a way such that you know when you move these sliders, we can actually cause um, Omnisphere to. Uh, it's called a GUI link, uh, where Omnisphere plugin will actually switch to the um, the GUI page that we want. So the idea is that if I'm you know controlling page B. And I'm sliding these. I want to, you know, automatically have Omnisphere swap to um, tab B. There is a way to do that. It's a little bit complicated, and I'm still working out how to, you know, how to do this correctly. Um, and uh, but it is, it is something I'm working on, and hopefully, you know, I'll I'll finish it, uh, you know, in another week or two. Um, but okay. Uh, so that's it for this video. All right. Thank you.